This morning on today's health, should marijuana be legal? A first of its kind and controversial ad debuted on Wednesday on many local television stations in California. Take a look. Sacramento says huge cuts to schools, health care and police are inevitable due to California's budget crisis. Even our state parks could be closed. But the governor and legislature are ignoring millions of Californians who want to pay taxes. We're marijuana consumers. Instead of being treated like criminals for using a substance safer than alcohol, we want to pay our fair share. Taxes from California's marijuana industry could pay the salaries of 20,000 teachers. Isn't it time? And with us to make the case for and against legalizing marijuana, Aaron Houston with the Marijuana Policy Project, who helped create that ad, and Dr. Andrea Barthwell, a former deputy director of the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, and NBC's chief medical editor, Dr. Nancy Snyderman, also joining us. Good morning to Hi, all Nan. of you. Let me start with you, uh, Dr. Nancy, because let's clarify, California sure. is already, they already legalized marijuana for medicinal purposes. Right. So let's... Let's clarify how marijuana is used in medicine right now. Right now, there are 13 states that have used, have said by law, you can use marijuana for medicinal purposes. Everything from Lou Gehrig's disease, glaucoma, mm -hmm. chemotherapy, nausea, to gain weight in anorexia. So that's sort of how it's been carved out. This bill uh, being floated around in California would legalize mm -hmm. marijuana and tax marijuana for all as a crash cop. Right. cop beyond just the, the need for medicinal marijuana. And there is a pill form of marijuana as well, but what people are fighting to do is to legalize marijuana right. across the board. There is something, in California. what gets you high when you smoke pot is that there's something called the cannabinoids and there's something called THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, which has been mm -hmm. synthesized into a drug called Marinol. So the pro, um, the anti people will say, don't legalize marijuana, you can use the drug. If you talk to patients who've used Marinol, they will say, nice try, but it is it's not, not as effect. effective. So there may be more going on in the, when you in inhale marijuana. Aaron, you're the group uh, responsible, of, partly responsible for putting that ad out, looking to make marijuana legal for all purposes, not just medicinal. Why, why now? Why are you starting this in the state of California? Uh, well, the state of California is a logical place to start because of the crippling budget deficit facing that state right now. Uh, additionally, California, of course, was the first in the nation to make medical marijuana available to seriously ill patients. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, California could make around a billion dollars in tax uh, dollars from, from uh, legalizing it, uh, taxing and regulating marijuana like alcohol. Uh, but more importantly and more broadly across the, the board, marijuana is the nation's largest cash crop valued at $36 billion a year, bigger than corn and wheat combined. Mm -hmm. uh, and partially because of that, the Mexican drug cartels, which have gotten such notoriety recently, actually make 70% of their profits from marijuana sales alone, which is a remarkable figure. It's staggering. They're active in 230 American cities. We'd like to control marijuana, regulate it, keep it out of kids' hands. Legalize, but regulate, you say? Yes, regulate it like alcohol or tobacco. And, and we can see that the current policy on marijuana has not worked. Since marijuana was first banned in 1937, use has gone up by 40%. Four thousand percent, Dr. Barthwell. Let me bring you into the debate here, and, and you disagree with this proposal. Why? I disagree because uh, there are lots of states across the country that have crippling budget issues now with unemployment and erosion to their tax base, and they're finding it difficult to pay for many social services, including treatment. The reality is, sixty cents out of every dollar that we spend on treatment in this country goes to pay for marijuana and abuse dependence mm. and there is no reason for us to make marijuana more available in a, a cheaper form more widely available and increase the burden to society tobacco cost us about 200 billion a year in its consequences and the tax on tobacco only pay for about 20 percent of that there's no reason to believe that we would not see the cost associated with marijuana use soaring if we made it more uh, available and cheaper. What, Andrew, what, uh, go ahead. I, go I ahead, don't know Aaron. if that's a fair characterization, saying that so many treatment dollars go to marijuana in particular. In fact, pro probably a large bulk of the treatment dollars she's talking about mm -hmm. uh, come from alcohol. Some of the social consequences and the costs come from alcohol, a much more dangerous substance than marijuana toxic. You can actually die from just the withdrawal symptoms alone. Yeah, it's interesting because let's talk about one of the claims in the ad, and that's that it states that uh, alcohol is actually worse for people than marijuana is. And, and Aaron, let me ask you, I mean, what evidence do you have to back that up? Or what are you well, the, basing the that claim on? The National Institute on Drug Abuse, take, take that for example, uh, says that some of the worst symptoms associated with marijuana withdrawal uh, are irritability, 
strange dreams and difficulty mm -hmm. sleeping. Compare that to uh, alcohol, and certainly Dr. Nancy would be a, a better authority on this than I, but, but uh, take, take alcohol where death can occur and grand mal seizures can occur from the withdrawal symptoms. And I think one of the problems is we have to be very careful that we aren't comparing apples and oranges. Right. You know, anytime you inhale smoke, just as a physician, whether it's, you know, smoke from a burning building or cigarette or cigar or marijuana. It's causing damage. Well, there's something. So, you know, there's always a trade off. Whether it's a pill or whether it's smoke, there's always going to be a trade off. And, 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 and Dr. Barth, well, let me ask your take on the, the health effects of this. I mean, you say in the long run that the health effects. That the cost of this is going to be much greater than any benefit uh, to a state or a state budget, right? Well, what we've got to remember is that health advocates such as myself and others have pushed back on tobacco. And we really have tobacco at an all-time low use in this country. And part of what's driven that is taxation in a public health campaign that's focused on the negative health effects of tobacco. It doesn't make sense to me while all of America's eyes are focused on Washington and health care uh, reform and the fact that we need a health promotion uh, system in this country. We're trying to eat organic, exercise, uh, eat right. better, wear sunscreen and our safety belts, and we've been effective in pushing back on tobacco that we would promote smoking and other substance. All right, we're going to have to leave the debate there, unfortunately. This is just the beginning of the discussion, I'm sure. Aaron Houston, thank you. Dr. Andrea Barthwell and Dr. Nancy Snyderman, as always. Well. Thanks for being here.